Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kairos. Welcome back to Naval Action. This is going to be a bit of a sequel to my getting started in the Caribbean server video. Now that we've made some money with uh, passenger missions and uh, just sailing around, it's time to start thinking about combat. And to do that, we're going to want to set up our ships. Now if you finish the tutorial, you will actually get this here, Cerberus. Yours will look a little bit different because I've actually painted mine with the DLC. But uh, you can claim it once you've finished up here the tutorial, the final exam. You will get a permit for this ship. I've redeemed mine. And uh, we should have a look here to see what kind of stats she's got. So I've redeemed her in Live Oak S, White Oak S, which I would recommend for... Um, for a starting ship that you're trying to level up when you're redeeming your ships. Um, I do have a video on wood builds that you can look at. It should be still fairly current. I'll try and remember to leave a link to that in the description for you guys. We have cannons aboard this ship. At the moment, all you're going to have to worry about is medium guns. This early on, you're not going to be buying fancy guns. But if you do need to buy guns, what you want to be doing is go down here into the shop and you should find right away you should see cannons you want to go to medium guns and you want to get the best guns really that your ship can carry in this case the best we can carry are nine pound medium guns and if you want to look at what you can actually carry you can see that you can take four to nine pounders so if you wanted to you could have lighter guns on this ship um, and you could also take 32 pounder carronades if you had them, but at this stage, you're not going to have to worry about that. And of course, we have a couple of stern chasers, guns sitting on the back of the ship, which we can shoot off when we're being chased down by British players. The other thing you have to start worrying about when you move up to bigger ships, once you've finished leveling up your basic brig and you've uh, been around with some seventh rates, you will need to think about your crew. So at the moment, I'm rover rank. And I can have as many as 300 men in total. Which means I need to be aware if I am using a ship with um, higher crew requirements than 300. I do not want to be using that ship until I have a high enough rank to actually crew that ship properly. You can sail a ship with less crew. I can under crew if I so chose. But... The less crew you have, the less effective you will be in battle. So you absolutely want to be avoiding sailing ships at all, really, unless you can at least, I would say, at least 90 to 95% crew. Um, don't even bother leaving port unless you can crew your ships at least up to 90%, and preferably 100%, because otherwise you will notice a steep decline, as it were, a steep decrease in the effectiveness of your vessel. You cannot sail a ship, you cannot shoot guns without men to man them. Now the other thing of course that you want to do before you even consider leaving port, especially in a warship, is making sure that you have enough supplies. You need to make sure that you're ready for action and supplied up for battle. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at the ship that we're taking out, in this case the Cerberus. Go to your navy and hover over the ship you want. And you can see all the statistics there. Now this ship is built from live and white oak. So she's going to require a little bit more in the way of hull repairs. Certainly than the uh, basic brig required. And her crew is much larger of course. So she's going to need more rum. You can see there she has a crew of almost 200. Um, a good rule of thumb. Especially when rum is abundant. Is just take as much rum as you have crew. But we could probably get away with 150, I reckon, rum. And then we have there, you can see we need eight hull repairs to do one cycle of repairs. If you're doing PvP, I'd recommend taking at least five cycles of repairs. But if you're just pottering around doing basic PvE, especially if you're not planning on taking on bigger ships, you could probably get away with two or three cycles of repair. In our case, we're just going to take two cycles because we are 
low on resources at the moment and we don't have a lot of reales. So we're just going to take 16 hull repairs and four, sorry, eight. We'll take two cycles of rig repairs, so that's eight. So we can close this down. We can open up our warehouse and our Cerberus hull. And we can get for the hold, we can split its 16 hull repairs. Make sure you stick them in your Cerberus. We could probably get away with 100 rum, to be honest. Mm. Let's just take 150 to make sure. Rum is cheap these days, so we can take it. 150 rum and 8 rig repairs. However, there is one more thing that you can do if you have a little bit of spare change. And this is what we're going to do for this episode. We should look to upgrade our ships. Now, if you're just beginning and you haven't done any combat at all in this game, I would recommend not buying anything until you have the hang of sailing. So just sail around in your basic brig and attack something very small. Um, another brig would be fine. And just practice your gunnery, practice your sailing, and, um, you know, just get used to the game. Because any upgrades that you buy will be lost. Any supplies you put in your ships will be lost if you are sunk. And of course, if you have a half-decent ship, like this Cerberus is indeed a half-decent ship, you are not going to get this ship back if you do lose it. It's going to be a long time before we find ourselves another Cerberus like this. We're going to have to level up before we, we can find one. We can either capture one or we can buy one. Or if we were really keen, we could craft one later down the track. But for now, just be careful err on the side of caution this is not world of warships if you sink you will lose all your stuff but if you are a little bit more confident and i am a little bit more confident what we can do is set up our ship with upgrades and get her really ready to actually do some proper damage now if you come in here you can see the cerberus has three slots most ships will have three slots better ships will rarely have more i think a um I can't remember the color coding. I think blue is three. And then purple, I think, is five. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while since I've played this game, but um, maybe purple. Purple is four and gold is five, I, re I seem to remember. So some ships can have more upgrade slots available, but most will have just the three. Now... We can fill these in right away. Over here you can see knowledge slots, and these are for when you level up your ship. You can see we need to get to 350 experience on this Cerberus before we can unlock a knowledge slot. And then we can put books in here if we find books. We can learn the knowledge in these books and apply it to our ship, which is going to be really effective once we've got this to level 5. We will have a very powerful Cerberus indeed. Incidentally, if you claim your Cerberus, you can check here for ship bonuses. In our case, we didn't get anything particularly good. We did get a heavy rig, as you can see down there. Bit of a bonus. And we got a three-point mast and rig bonus, which will not help us much against AI. It's more useful for PvP, but that's okay. So this Cerberus is relatively expendable. I'm not too concerned if we lose her. She's not the best ship on the high seas. But... We can fill these slots in, and to do that, we need to go to our shop. Now, we could capture upgrades, of course, and just put... Because sometimes AI drop upgrades when you sync them. So we could go and loot for upgrades. But because the market is quite cheap at the moment, we can go straight in here to the Mortimer Town shop. If you are um, playing a different nation, I recommend probably your home port would be the best bet, uh, the starting port, or else ask... Come down here into the nation chat and ask your community where the markets are. But we're going to have a look through here and just browse. You can come with me on a shopping trip as we go through and think about what we might want to put on our ship. And you might learn a thing or two about what upgrades are available while we're at it and the market prices. So obviously, if you've got something this cheap, like 100 gold, it's probably just been thrown here um, by the, the game, right? You can see there's... 917 available apparently so <laughs> there's plenty of these winged out ballasts these are less good upgrades 
the um, devs have in their update notes have mentioned that they're going to color code these in the future so newer players will be able to hopefully recognize when a upgrade is rare and when it's not rare so that will make things a lot easier for you guys but for now you just have to take my word for what is a good upgrade and what is not french rig refit you can see there could could work but it's again not going to help for pve very much so we don't need to worry about this 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 is going to be a pve ship by the way um, and it's going to be a slogging kind of ship it's going to be a heavy hitter it's going to get in close and pump broadsides into our foes so think about how you want to build your ship before you actually buy your upgrades we want things that will increase our hull strength we want things that will increase our firepower and potentially our boarding capacity so we don't need to worry so much about the rigging floating battery well we don't want that because it will decrease our max speed even more and that's not something i want i want at least the ability to maneuver now if you've just got a, a throwaway ship this is a good one basic carpentry tools you could do that because um, that will increase your repair ability quite well for its price that's actually a really good choice we might come back to that extra rum could be good if you're planning to board or getting close um it's good for reload time it's good if you're not planning to shoot at a long distance basically we have slightly better upgrades here that are probably put up by players my would be my guess nasa borders but we don't want to spend that much on on this ship this is not worth it so we want to be limiting ourselves at the moment to fairly basic upgrades but i'll go through and see what we've got um apprentice carpenters that's not bad we could we could grab that for fifteen thousand reales i think that's actually a pretty good price regardless in if, even if we decide not to put it on this ship we can put it on some other ship you can see here it's actually got um it's actually got a tax port tax so it's a little bit more than fifteen thousand, but that's fine we'll take that thank you very much apprentice carpenters are going to be a little bit better than the basic carpentry tools we saw earlier although we will probably grab one of those as well and here is what i decided to go with after a little bit more thought and shopping around we have first upgrade basic carpentry tools i decided if we look here you can see i've still got the apprentice carpenters i decided not to put them on because i think these we should probably save these for a slightly better ship than the one we're currently using so just the basic carpentry tools will increase our repair a little bit so when we get damaged we'll be just a little bit better at repairing extra chain so we can throw more uh, chain shot at ai ships and hopefully capture something better than what we're currently sailing and we went with the diagonal riders i got these for 800 reales which is a pretty good price these will slow us down you can see they're minus three speed so definitely not a meta upgrade you would never want to put this on your pvp ship but when you're just leveling up and you're running around uh tanking ai broadsides this is fine extra 15 percent hit points in exchange for um a three percent hit to our speed on a ship that isn't designed for speed anyway you can see there um, our speed is already taking a hit simply because we built her out of live oak and white oak so there you have it we've built this ship as a brawler we have built this ship with the um the uh idea of tanking heavy broadsides from ships as big or bigger than ourselves we have a bit of repairs we have a bit of extra chain and we have a bit more survivability so that is the cerberus done and i will show you guys quickly one more ship i have a dlc ship which i'll pull up in a minute we'll uh, get that out and i'll show you what i've got planned for that as well now here we have the other ship we're going to be upgrading today this is the hercules she's actually a dlc ship and i normally don't uh, show off the dlc ships very much on my channel because i try to aim for new players um, i try to just concentrate on content you can actually earn in the game rather than purchase and um, these dlcs are quite expensive quite overpriced in my opinion but if you are going to go for a dlc ship i would recommend this one because it is relatively cheap um, to purchase and it is a very unique looking vessel very nice looking ship 
really quite beautiful to handle, very maneuverable. And um, this will allow you to go out into the open world and really use the fifth rate early on without worrying about getting sunk. If you do get sunk, you can just um, rebuild her or reclaim her tomorrow um, and you will get another ship just like this one that you can also send out to get itself killed. Um, it's a good way to learn the game if you do have a few um, a few extra dollars to spend on the game and you're sure that this is the game for you. This is a good DLC ship as far as DLC ships go. We're going to set her up now with upgrades. And to do that, we're going to, of course, have to go back into the shop. You can see she has a very unique gun um, set up here. She actually can carry 10 18-pounders, which makes her surprisingly hard-hitting if you aim your shots well. Um... But we're going to go into the shop right now and uh, have a look, see what we can find. Let's go for upgrades once again. And I will actually show you putting these upgrades on this time. I was having a think about how we're going to set this ship up. I should say quickly, I built her or, re or claimed her out of um, Teak and Sabaku. This is a good all-purpose build. Um, I am not planning to use this ship for PvP. Um, but... I am thinking of taking her out into areas where she might get attacked by other players. And if that happens, I want to be able to fight back. So we're going to build this as a sort of exploration ship, you might say. She's going to be out looking looking for trouble on the map, but mostly going for AI. But I do want to have the ability to fight back if I'm attacked. So we're going to go for a more maneuverable build for this one. I'm thinking... What we might do, because this is a square rigger, we could go for Spanish rig refit, which will decrease our mass thickness a little bit, but it will increase our spanker power and our, um, sorry, decrease our spanker power in exchange for better square sails. So we'll basically get these big sails here, will be more effective, um, and these smaller, smaller sails that are good for going upwind will become less effective essentially so this will make us faster going downwind and being a square rigger that's a good thing we could do that or alternatively we could go for the french rig this is going to be totally useless to us against ai but if we do get attacked by a player this might give our masts a little bit more survivability so we can get away hopefully or last a little bit longer in combat um i think we will actually because there is a disadvantage with putting this Spanish rig on, it will make uh, tacking a little bit harder, whereas there's no disadvantage for this. So we'll just go with the French rig refit for now. We'll just go one of those and purchase one. There you go. Now we could throw on the apprentice carpenters we got earlier, but once again, this ship is not great. It's uh, not got particularly good bonuses. If we look here, you can see she's got just the um, a little bit of a mast and rig bonus. And she's got a pretty, really good gunnery bonus, actually, but nothing else. So I think we can probably just throw on another basic carpentry tools. You can never go wrong with one of these. There's uh, always going to be repairs to do at sea. So we'll grab a basic carpentry tools and throw them on as well. And after a little bit of thought about it, for our final upgrade, again, I just want to stick with the very basic upgrades here that you guys can afford. Um, we could try and find something better. There was some weighted gunpowder down here we could grab for 8,000 reales, which isn't too bad. But uh, we did have some Congreve sites that were briefly up for a very good price, but they've bumped up in price in the last couple of minutes. So somebody bought them before I got a chance to, to grab them. So I think we're just going to stick with the basics and we're just going to grab to go with, to stack with the, um, the French rig. We'll try and find some basic sales. Now, Incidentally, what you can do here is you can select uh, different categories for the kind of upgrades you want. You could go crew, and you could find only crew upgrades that will increase your crew strength. You could do survival, which will be your repairs and so on. And um, no, this oh yeah, this is repairs and also um, pumps and um, better planking and so on. And here is where we're going to find our basic strong sails. There's hundreds of these available. This is just going to once again, increase our sail hit points, which will... Um, actually, I think the previous upgrade we put on was for the masts, wasn't it? So, yeah, we've got stronger masts, and with this, we'll have slightly stronger sails as well. So we're going to have a ship that is 
not necessarily built for specifically for killing AI, like the last ship we just upgraded, the Cerberus. But this is a ship we can just wander around on the map and we have a few upgrades to keep our sails and uh, masts from getting damaged if we do get attacked by another player. This is definitely not a meta build. I'm just doing this to show you guys how you can throw upgrades on your ships right away for a relatively cheap price. And we can always destroy these upgrades if we find something better. So we're going to put on the basic sails and to do that by the way you just you know grab the grab the thing hover it over your upgrade slot and pop it on there it is and you can see there you'll see the the statistics change as you put different upgrades on we will pop on the french rig refit which should increase our mass strength there you go that went up by 10 points i think about plus 44 now and Last of all, of course, we'll pop on our basic carpentry tools, which will make us a little bit better at repairing. There you go. So that is our basic build done. We have this ship ready to go. We just need to put guns on it, and I can take that anywhere I want and get it to sunk by somebody uh, with a British flag up. So, fantastic. Our repairs are ready, and the next thing to do, of course, is get our Cerberus out, which we had here. Grab our Cerberus and get ready to go and find something to sink out on the open world. Now I've just been sitting outside Mortimer Town for a little bit waiting for something to come past and there's not a lot of rich pickings out here at the moment mostly because there's quite a lot of players online and uh, they are all tagging everything but I think this here brig could be a good starting point. This uh, is actually an elite brig so it might be actually worth our time to attack if we can catch it. We have a very slow ship um, right now because we have built her for strength. So we'll come take her out. Try and stay if you're just starting out and you're worried about losing your ship. Try and stay in the capital area once again because you're much safer here. Well, you're very safe here. You won't be attacked by any players and you can just concentrate on sinking your enemy AI without interruption but we're going to tag this fella here and fight our first battle i think all right ladies and gentlemen here we are we have a 10 second countdown before the battle commences and we're probably going to get a broadside right away from this guy because we're in line of fire yep that's going to hurt quite a lot but that's all right we can return fire make sure you fire a aiming shot first We've got some leaks in there I have um, gone and selected my perks already so I can fire right away I've got the prepared perk I will make a video later on discussing perks and we're going to get a second broadside because this ship is much more maneuverable than us but we can try and angle away excellent might as well continue actually let's, let's put the sails back there continue around because we've got the wind here. I should have fired my stern chasers but I was preoccupied and I will go to battle sails just it's a good habit to have even though it will make things easier if I have more sail. Just wait for the ship to straighten itself up. It's good. More leaks, fantastic that'll help and we'll go back around again. Try and keep the wind um, in your sails. Don't uh, worry about tacking so much at the moment. Just stay in the wind and practice tacking later. So we're just gonna veer back and forth here across the, with the wind behind us as much as possible and slowly whittle down this ship. Good hits. We'll, t we'll angle in at this point. Like so, because I think we're about to get a broadside. I don't want to go too too much into the wind though. Hopefully we'll reload in time. No, we won't. So this isn't good. 
angle. Angle, angle. Ow. Okay, we saved a few of those shots there. We might as well continue around now. Got the turn going. Now, if you're fighting AI, you could go to full sails quite happily and not worry about losing your mask because the AI doesn't seem to target the mast ever, but that'll do, but it's a good habit to get into for when you do get into PvP to keep your sails at battle sails when you're not trying to get places fast. So I'm angling now to try and keep my hull out of his broadside. I am anticipating a broadside now. We'll try and cut across his stern. If I had bow chasers, I'd be firing those, but... Angle. There's a bounce. That's what we want. Beautiful. Alright, let's see if we can get a broadside in here. This could be good. And... Fire. Quite good. Alright, let's get back into the wind. So I think we almost have these guys. We're about to um, receive another broadside, but we're almost reloaded ourselves. Just angle a little bit more. I'm gonna go into the wind a bit here. There we go. Whoop, steady on. That's a little bit too far. There we go. We're about to fire one more broadside. Let's Aim for the waterline. Leading shot fire. Oh, it went over the top of the deck. Damn these waves. Okay, so we'll need one more broadside. Let's go back into the wind. It's not attack. Fire out. Stern chases. One more volley. Should be enough to bring her down. We are repairing our ship, as you can see there. Gone and popped some repairs. Probably didn't need to do that, but I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose our ship. Two can play at that game. There we go. Take that. We just hit their pumps, which is fantastic. And there she goes. She's going to sink now. She's got a slither of HP left, but her pumps are damaged. She'll be taking on water. She's going to be going down very shortly, so we are going to actually come across here and get into position. So we're not, we don't receive any more damage than we need to. And we'll get ready. She'll start sinking very shortly. And we should be able to take her loot. Let's actually just stop. Yeah, there we go. She's, she's down. We'll turn our sails into the as much as we can into the wind to try and slow us down or away from the wind I should say parallel with the wind we'll slowly start to slow down and we can just immediately have a look inside here and see what we've got so you can check here as you can see that was a really good <laughs> a really good kill we can see here she was um, a breast refit white oak and fur, so not a good build. It wouldn't have been worth keeping her anyway, even if she, even if we hadn't sunk her. But her cargo, oh yes, we have doubloons now, ladies and gentlemen. See what uh, see what I mean about the elite AI? Plenty of doubloons. We have hull repairs to replace the ones we use. We can just pop them straight in there. We have rum. We didn't use any rum. We have some tools, which are um, crafting goods. We can sell those, or we can keep them for later. We have more diagonal riders to use on another ship we have a brig elite note which i will show you how to use just at the end of the video and we have a couple of 12 pounder obusiers which i think we could probably use to replace our um stern chasers so that is an excellent an excellent result that is our first kill and um we did quite well i'm i'm happy with that result all right ladies and gentlemen we're back in port and i have put all our supplies into the warehouse um, except for the doubloons, which are going to need to go up here. 
in the money chest. You can see here we can put, I think, as many as 10,000 doubloons, last I checked, in here. So we're going to pop them, if I can get the thing to behave itself. Let's just close that down for a moment. We'll pop these in here. There we go. We have now doubloons in the money chest. We could put them in the, um, in the warehouse as well if we wanted to, but um, until I get more than 10,000 doubloons, there's no reason why I shouldn't keep them in here. And we can use these now to transport ourselves quickly between outposts as well, which is going to make traveling a lot easier for us. So, there we go. I'm going to get this up again here. We also have a couple of obusiers, which are basically um, going to be our stern guns now. You can We can pull these out. You can see we can actually put 12-pounder carronades. The C is for carronade, and an obusier is a type of carronade. So we can look here and compare. Um, you can see how many crew the cannon needs. Compare it with the medium gun, how many crew it needs. You can see the hit points, the reload time, and so on. You can just compare notes. Um, I think that little bit of extra um, hit points, damage there, that we could get. We might as well throw these obusiers on. These are short-range guns, and you're probably going to be using your stern chasers at short range anyway, for the most part, as you spin around to um, to get another broadside onto a ship. So we'll just put these in here for now. And there we go. We have actually upgraded our ship somewhat just from fighting that battle. And the last thing to do before we end here is actually use this here, Elite Brig Note. Now, we could sell this if we wanted to, but... No one's probably going to, to buy a brig note here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to right-click and you can convert it. Do you want to convert your elite brig? Yes. Now, we don't get to choose the woods for this one. It's randomized. So we can go into our um, ship, into our navy, I should say, and we can actually see what we got. It's just a standard brig here. We got a white oak. Bermuda Cedar. Not the best build in the world, but it is at least seasoned wood, so that's something. And it's got a Barbary refit, um, so that's nice. That's not a bad little ship, and it's got a slight hull bonus. This is this would be a good brig, slightly better than a than a um, than the basic cutter. Sorry, the basic brig. We could take this out and just explore the map, get it killed, um, or we could sell it. Alternatively. But there you go. That is a successful voyage. I've uh, shown you how to put some upgrades on your ships. You can go out and fight your first battle and you'll just rinse and repeat that process and very slowly level up your ships and um, find better loot. Incidentally, we did get a little bit of experience. You can see there we now have 43 experience as a result of that battle and a few more of those battles and we'll be able to get our first um, knowledge slot as well. So... I think that's enough information for you guys to digest for one day. This has been Kairos. Thank you all for viewing. Hope to see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to do for naval action.